This is the story of people who say they have been Christians for 40 years and they don't look like it. They have obeyed God for 50 years and their impact does not go beyond their immediate household. Lot. What God did not permit to go with you that has gone with you. Today we're still going into discovering the secret of the apostolic the apostolic power. So we are actually in the school of the apostolic power. Write it down. We are currently running the school of the apostolic power. The, the, the syllabus of this school is about discovering the secrets. The kingdom secrets by which the ordinary men of Galilee uneducated, uninformed, unlettered, uncultured, not sophisticated in any way, not prominent and outstanding in any form, but how they change the world and impose the Christ upon cultures, impose the Christ upon nations, and create a civilization a new form of civilization that was not known, brought education, brought law and morality, influence territories and nations and cultures and individuals for generations. For as long as the Bible endures, we'll see Matthew. For as long as the, math, the Bible endures, we'll see Peter we we'll see James, we we'll see John. We we'll hear the stories of ordinary people who have brought us a life that could, have not, could not have been imagined. How did they do it? That's what we are doing currently in Grace Family. The school of apostolic power. And Let's look at our, let's see how our vision in Grace Family relates with this subject matter, this school we are running. Can you rise to your feet? And just, let's make just this first, this first part of our vision. Can we read it together? God is raising champions from ordinary people champions who will reveal and enforce his government in the world. That's it. From ordinary people. This church is a place for everybody who is not yet what God says the person is. This house is the house for everybody who is insufficient in one way or another. Not good enough. Not holy. Not righteous. This house is a place for people not known. People not notable and prominent. Or those who are known, but not as they should be known. Those who are seen, but not in the light of God seeing them. Those who stand, but not as tall as God will want them. That means they carry the element of the ordinary that needs transformation. This is the oil that is given for this house. To turn these ordinary people. To come to you in the, in the lowliness and the baseness of your story. In the wretchedness of your condition. And to bring you into the place of world changer. That you become a change agent from yourself to everyone. This is why I stand here. This is the oil I am the I am, I am, I am consecrated with. This is my call. And this is my relevance to you. And as I speak, I pray that the veil is taken from your eyes today. In Jesus' name. Today, I pray that words will not be wasted. That vision will come direct. I will meet you and God will speak your language to you. And you will hear what God says in your tongue. In your condition. You will not, God will not miss you as the target of his word. 
what needs to be changed now and to be healed now and to be transformed now. For God to be glorified in your life, it will not be postponed. You are number one in the agenda of today. And God will be glorified. Say amen. amen. By the Holy Spirit. Be seated. Be seated. So, because we have the same story, the same vision, the same plan like Jesus had over the disciples. Because this house, as God has shown to me right now, has assumed the same school that Jesus ran, by which that Jesus over, over, oversaw, by which he turned ordinary people into world-changing, world-transforming individuals. So we have to look at ourselves in parallel views. We have to see ourselves side by side. Look at the ordinariness of these men. How did God do it? How did they, how did they go about it? And look at your own self, your own situation, your own life, your own context. And then we will know how God is doing it and how God wants to do it. This is what we have been doing. So the project of turning ordinary people into champions and world changers we have said for weeks now, begins with simple invitation. Invitation to follow. When you follow, how you follow will determine how your own story will be told. When you follow, if you don't follow at all, after you have been invited and you don't ever follow, your story will not be told according to God's plan. If you follow after 90 years, your story will start after 90 years. If you follow partially, your story will be partial. And God's plan will be partial in your life. And so many people in this life, they leave just a very little fragment of God's plan for them. My cry every day and my burden every day is to leave the full story of God in my life. I will not leave a few chapters of God's plan for me. I will leave the entire book of God's plan for me. You have to take that decision as a person over yourself, over your family, over your marriage. That your marriage will not fulfill few chapters of God's book, of God's plan for you. You have to make that covenant over your life that your business, your wealth creation call, that whatever you have been called into, your profession will not just fulfill few chapters of God's plan for you. Because the plan of God for you is a book, is a volume. It's a book. And in every, in each book, you have chapters. You have, you have, you have chapters, you have sections, you have pages. There are people in the entire book of God's plan for them, they fulfill a couple of pages. And when we go to heaven, by the grace of God, the surprise of heaven will be the great people who were never great. The mighty people who were beggars. The changers who were useless. That shall be the greatest surprise. The wealthy were to feed others. Who complain every day that nobody remembered them. The lifters and the helpers of people. Who complain daily that their helpers have not arrived. The shock will be that the resources made available for you. You did not take advantage of them. So you did not become God's plan. And you just feel, fulfill few, few, few pages. And I want you to take a decision this morning that you will not fulfill few pages. You will not fulfill few chapters. You will fulfill the full book of God's plan for you. Can that be your decision? If I asked you to rise, will you rise? Please do. Raise your right hand. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. On the 13th day of August, the breakout month in Grace Family, in 2023, I covenant by the help of your grace. My life will not be reduced to a few pages of your book for me. My life will not be about a few chapters of your book for me. Father, by your, by your grace, I desire and I want to and I fulfill by your help the entire book of your plan for me in every area of my life 
Go ahead and speak. Go ahead and speak. I fulfilled the entire book. Not some. I fulfilled the entire book. Not part. I fulfilled the entire book. Complete. Everything. 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 Say, say Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, everything that has to be changed in my life, everything that has to be taken from my life and everything that has to be brought to my life for me to fulfill the whole of your book as your plan for me. Lord, I accept. Change what needs to be changed. Correct what needs to be corrected. Eliminate what needs to be eliminated. Lord, add to me what needs to be added in the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. The Holy Spirit will help you. These words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. I expect this word, this word, this pronouncement to become your burden, to become your vision, to become your addiction. This is the only addiction I have and I want to have. The addiction of the covenants in the grace of God that all of his book, all of his plan will be fulfilled in me. So these people responded. These ordinary men of Galilee, they responded. Don't be tired of Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 22. And Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 22. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon and Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me. Follow me. The simple call that everyone, educated and non-educated, high and low, far and near, white, black, color, from the northern hemisphere, from the southern hemisphere, in every continent, in every, every nationality, in every nation, country, in every, any, every tradition, every family, in every generation, the same call, follow me. Follow me implies live there and be where I am. Live there and go where I go. Follow me. This is what changed their life. When they followed and how they followed now become what we talk about today. We are here as Christians because they followed. They followed immediately. According to the scripture, they followed immediately. 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 Mark chapter 10, verse 20, 28. Mark chapter 10, verse 28. No. Let's go back to that. Matthew chapter 4, sorry. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 20. Matthew chapter 4. Very immediately. Say immediately. Yeah. Your children will be affected by the impact of how immediately you left or you have left or you will leave from today. Your future. Your history before God. There are two histories. The history written by man. And do you know what? Men know very little of you. So no matter what people write of you, it is not correct. It is not total. Even you writing your own history, you cannot write it completely. What of the one you did not know? What of the one your father never told you? My mom, my dad, especially my mom, well, I've loved my mom to live long enough to tell me a few things about me because I'm paying attention to my children. I'm taking note at every point. The uniqueness, the, the distinctiveness between my three children. I'm just taking note and we are taking photographs. We are capturing their moments so that in the future, thank God for the digital age. In the future, they will play their, will play their video. They will hear them from year one, from day one. So it's so important. What of you nobody tells you? Even when somebody tells you, tells you partially, there's just one person who can write your history. God. So, when life is done, your true history and story will not be presented by your father. It is not your biography that will be needed. God's story of you. That because you did not live when you should have lived, this is why. This was not this, and this was this. Because you left, and left partially. Left with hesitation, and left carelessly, 
and followed not intentionally. This is why you were never as tall as you were meant to be. This is why you are never as prominent. That's, this is why your picture now does not look like your picture here. For there is you seen in heaven, the plan of God for you, and there is you running around. The point is that sometimes the us running around is so little, so far away, so wretched, so ugly, so totally different from us in the sight of God, in the mind of God. The hope of the gospel, the project of the gospel is to bring you into synchrony, into synchronization, making you into total agreement, latching and connecting that the you on earth, you are exactly the you in heaven, in the sight of God. That is the joy of heaven. I pray in the name of Jesus that the joy of heaven will be fulfilled in your life today. Amen. Turn to somebody, say, this is my prayer for you. Come on, come on, engage somebody. Say, this is my prayer for you. That the joy of heaven will be fulfilled in your life today. That your picture in heaven will eventually become your picture on earth. That you will be on earth as it is, as you are in heaven. In Jesus' name. So they left immediately. That also affected everything. How, how immediate is your living? Since this series started, Write this down. What one thing have you left that used to be part of your life negatively, sinfully, dark, in a dark way? When we talk about sin, we always look at sin in only one light. Can I tell you something about sin? The Greek word for sin, do you, I've told you before. Do you remember? You know, the Greek word, the word sin has in New Testament is in Greek. In Old Testament is in Hebrew. Let me share with you what Greek word for sin is. Is atmatsia. Atmatsia. Atmatsia is like H A R M A R T I A. I'm not too sure of the R in H A before M, but you can just do it in case there's no M, there's no R, there's nothing wrong. H A R M M A R sorry M H A R M A R T I A Harmatia Greek is a guttural language so R sometimes has guttural sorry it's like a dragging harmatia okay the word harmatia let me share let me give you in terms of demonstration what had mercy means. Now, my target, are you looking at me? Please look at me. Everyone look at me. My target is to hit the first lady. Oh, people was like, yeah, I want to hit. Don't call human rights. No. I want to throw this at the first lady. I just want to hit her at the forehead. Did I hit her? I missed the map. So, amasia means missing the mark. Sin, the word sin means missing the mark. Missing God's mark for you. So, when we talk about sin, everybody thinks about adultery, fornication. It's just one of the, the two of the many endless ways that people miss the mark of God for them. Many children are dwarfed and useless because parents miss the mark in raising them. Every time a mark is missed, something goes wrong. So sin is deeper than just this action or that action. It means you are less than you were made to. You are less than your capacity. You are less than God's expectation for you. You are less than God's plan for you. So sin has a natural arrangement to make you smaller, weaker, fewer, shorter, and that. That's what sin is all about. So, had mercy or sin is missing the mark. So, if you look at in how many areas, if you have since we started having this series, leave, leave. We have been speaking that for weeks now, and we will not stop. Until God tells us it's time to move on. So if I come and repeat everything I've been saying, 
sir, don't judge me. Uh, I, I don't judge me that way. Just get into the spirit and find out. The, how do you judge me? Judge me by what this word has done in your life. Not that I'm repeating. Is it the same thing? The same thing. Oh, you are hearing the same thing. Because you've not, you are still missing a mark in a particular area. And because you are missing the mark in a particular area, the mercy of God is waiting for you to grow up into God's plan for you. But because you keep missing the mark, you keep remaining shorter, smaller. And you blame witches and wizards. You see, when you miss the mark, you will reduce to the level that witches can knock you in the night. You cannot be tall enough. Sir, there are people before you knock them, you need to climb, you need to climb story building. Before you reach their head. So there are some people that even if you climb the tallest building, which right now is in downtown Dubai, I think so, that you cannot talk, knock them. Because in the spirit, they are so high. There are some people, it, it does not matter how many witches. The scripture says the mighty rod has been given to you from Zion so that you rule. Where? In the midst of your foe. In the midst of your foe means you are so tall that your foes. oh, there was something, Lily Paul, a book, Lily Paul, Lily Paul, Lily Pot. Okay, when we were children, you see little people and one tall person. You see, there are some people who are like ants at the feet of some people. I don't know what I'm communicating. So, every time you miss the mark, your height is reduced, your age is reduced. Your span is reduced. Your reach is reduced. You miss the mark. What you did was to take you higher, but you miss the mark. You drop where it reached, and you fall short. This is the story of, this is the story of rising and falling. This is the story of near success syndrome. I am so close to it. But I couldn't get it. You are, there is an area in your life that you are missing the mark. You may say, but I'm faithful to my wife. Who told you that's the only area of mark? Look at that area that you are always almost near, but you are not able to capture it. What, act, what program of action, what line of action are you always falling behind? Falling short of God's plan, falling short of God's standard. That's why you are not able to hit it. There are too many things we blame witches and wizards, blame the devil, and the devil just takes glory for nothing. The devil is not involved. The only thing the devil does is just to help you to miss the mark. So stop, stop seeing sin in a way that makes you comfortable. Start seeing, seeing sin as your reducer. As the reducer of your space. So your real size is not you physical. That's not your mind. That's not your size. Your real size is spiritual. This is it. So, if now, use this to do this assignment. Write it down. If you have been sitting in this congregation. And write it down if you are coming for the first time. So that... One week later, two weeks later, you go back to that question. What have I left? In what area that I've been missing the mark, have I started hitting the target, doing it as I should do? In honoring God, in serving God, in the discharge of your responsibility, in your business. I trust the Holy Spirit to help you. So how you live, you can live, but you miss the mark. You live. You can live carelessly. You can live not immediately. You live up before you die, just few weeks before you die. You now live. You die, you die trying to live. And it has no impact on the living. And I keep reminding you, do you know that on the last day when everything is gathered, the kingdom of God shall come down to the earth? It is on earth God will rule over us. We were not made for heaven. 
Every fruit of our Christian living is to affect the earth. Heaven does not need us. Heaven is perfect. Does not need light. You are the light, not of heaven. Light of where? The world. So when people say, no matter what you do, you shall go to heaven. That's nonsensical. Absolutely nonsensical. Is it ignor ignorant? Whatever you do affects the plan of God for you and others here. And that will be the basis of your judgment. Go and read the end of the book of Genesis of Revelation. The kingdom of God shall become the kingdom of this world. It shall descend. New Jerusalem shall descend from above and be here. So man is not meant to go live some is here. That's why everyone will be judged according to what he did here. Judgment is based on what you do here. So missing the map makes you small here and affects your eternal destiny here. It is here we write our eternal story. It is here we write our story after life. So when last, how far, when was the last time you left and there was a mark in your body? You left and you started meeting the mark, not missing the mark in a particular area. For as long as church is where you hear and what you hear does not have any impact upon you. You are recorded in the waste bin of heaven. Waste bin means this one is not useful to the plan of God. Because if you keep missing the mark, the missing mark makes you smaller. Incapable of feeling the size of God's plan for you. Incapable of sitting on the seat of God's plan for you. Incapable of flying the flying object, the aeroplane. So you need to grow up to do certain things. Children can drive toys that are cars, but it takes those who have grown to drive trucks in real life. Rise to your feet. Say, I am not going to fulfill few pages. Speak it, raise your right hand and speak it louder. Say, I'm not going to fulfill few pages. I am fulfilling the entire book. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every area of my life that I miss the mark, I ask for mercy and I ask for redemption. Pray, pray now. Say, Lord, I ask for mercy and redemption. 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 Mercy and redemption. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated, be seated, be seated. Last week we talked about the ultimate plan of the enemy is to deny you a place in God's plan. Do you remember? Yeah. Don't forget, please. Don't. Now, I, I, I want to tell you the second thing. If the devil cannot fully, completely deny you a place in God's plan for you, the next thing is he will reduce you, give you, allow you just a little. And that little means eventually we'll get it. If he cannot deny you a place in God's life, if he cannot succeed, the next plan is to keep you as small as possible and to allow you to arrive as late as possible. Sometimes people arrive after they are dead. Some people graduate and their certificate is only known after they die. It becomes post human. Some people marry after they are dead. <laughs> you, will, you will laugh. I know somebody who died, who died before he married. He just and he married as he died. He lived for forty something years. Had been a very wonderful, good person. But I met him because he missed Max in very specific ways. One of the few people who walked up to me, you know, this is a good person naturally, but has not entered into the plan of God. And I started working with him. He reached a point. Part of it was to get him to marry. He was getting lit into his 40s. And this is somebody who has had prominent connection and growing up, including outside the country. 
but kept missing the mark. So, because of his life, nobody will love him enough to marry him. Nobody will accept him as a married experience, I mean person. Everything he tried failed. Just couldn't understand it. So we started working. By the time he found somebody that loved him, and one of the best people I've known, who just loved him and told me, you know what, I talked to this man, not because of anything, I've come to know that as a person, he's such a good person. And in the process, few things were discovered about him. And they started the project of correcting those few things. He died in the process. And this person, who for the first time loved him, before it got to the point of death, said, well, even if this person recovers, I cannot marry this person. But I'll stand by him till the end. I hope he recovers because he's a good man. So the person took holiday from work and a very responsible, very serious, very serious person took holiday from work, stayed with him in the hospital. Also, everybody who saw him thought that was the wife. Took holiday from work, stood by him in the hospital. I was, he was battling the last moment of his death. The person was... The person you will see in the morning, evening, and night. And the last day, in the night, the person had been in the hospital for two, three days without change. So they decided to go home for a change, to refresh in the night. By about 3 a.m., the spirit of that person visited. The person woke her up in the morning. After he left his body, he came to say thank you to the last, the first love and the last love of his life. The person woke up and just realized, felt his presence everywhere. By the time he went to the hospital, he was told, about that time, he breathed his last. Certainly, he married. He married after he died. Because he had missed the mark for too long. He left too late. So before he could arrive at the destination, the door had been closed. But he had a last time to say bye-bye. Some people, the only success they have in life is to say bye-bye to success. Rise again. Say, I will not fulfill some pages. When I say speak, it is your responsibility. I cannot speak for you. Say, I will not fulfill some pages. I will not fulfill even some chapters. Say, I will fulfill the entire book of God's plan for me. Pray that. Say, I will not end up in life saying bye-bye to success. I will not end in my life saying bye-bye to what was supposed to be my life. I will not say bye to what was supposed to be my blessing. I will not. In the name of Jesus Christ, be seated, write that prayer intention. Pray through it until the burden leaves you. And find out the changes you must make. This is a correctional place. This is transformational house. The all in this house is to change, is to turn. So you must do assignment. When I told you have a notebook, you write down. It's not just praying. What are the basic fundamental changes that must happen? It means repentance and conversion. In what area will you have to turn from what you are doing and where you are? And in what area you have to be converted, taken from that place into another place, from that form to another. So if the enemy cannot stop you completely, the next thing is to keep you small. Keep you so small that you say bye-bye to the life you were told. So for you, I saw, I saw blessing. And you die saying bye-bye to blessing, but you were not blessed on earth. As you die, you see a glimpse of greatness. Maybe people attending your funeral and your funeral was so beautiful and you just wish to live the life as beautiful as your funeral. Some people, the most beautiful day of their life is their funeral. Sir, I don't want my funeral to be beautiful. I want to live a beautiful life. Some people, all they have is a beautiful burial. And so people buy, sell land, sell properties to bury a dead body. 
to sell. Oh. So when people come and meet me, sometimes as a priest, as a minister, you are under pressure to help somebody. So there are areas I see need. I just ask God, please help me. Or who do I talk to to help this person? The last area I can help somebody so is in burial. My heart is hardened. No, I cannot. Don't borrow to bury. Don't sell property to bury. That's why our culture must change. The culture of this state must change. I will not see death until it changes. The burial is not an opportunity for the living to die. Right now, burial kills people. So people bury people dying. After they bury their father, they cannot recover for 10 years. Sir, is that not hell? And almost every, every, every chief, he says he's an elder. Everybody goes to church. The traditional chief, they are given big house. Very beautiful edifice for tradition. To keep people in bondage in marriage. To keep people in bondage in, in marriage and in, in, in burial. Sir, government must wake up. Enough of useless, hypocritical, hiring people to mock the name of God in holiness. Nonsense. Government must bring change. If we are a Christian state, bring the gospel to put pressure on traditional institutions to bring about the liberation of the land. Sir, that's my interest in government. That's my interest in the state. That's my interest in the gospel. People have to be delivered. So you see people, land, houses, everywhere mortgage and given out. And they bury somebody. And somebody who lived a dirty, a hopeless, useless life is given a very beautiful day. That if he himself, is, 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 if his eyes will be open to see, he said, that one is not me. When somebody dies, his death should make life easier. So people die and will. no wenyeko. This land, give to that person. This one, give to that person. People don't die and take everything. A few things I don't want to say. So we just move on. These are things that weigh me down for years in prayer. That you see somebody coming to cry. I want to bury my father. I want to bury my mother. Anna had this on 10 years. What are you doing? So somebody dies two, three, four, five days, six days. What are you still doing? You are wasting time. Bury the person. Bury the person. Let village chief and all those, those people come. Come and tell them. Let me go and meet them and ask them, when will you die? So I bury somebody, just bury somebody, and they, they bring police. Let the police come and arrest you. So I will go to cell with you. I will appear in court with you if you are a member of my church. He said, I buried my father. And they say, okay, so anybody who tells you, you will come and answer. I say, you, will, you have answered. You know, you know, some people sit down in families and hold people to ransom. So we should attend their funeral. That's what church does. This is the church of the apostle. And Ananas and Sapphira, they fell down and died. What are we doing in church now? We are just, sir, where did you come to church today, sir? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Don't tell anybody I asked you this question. I love you. You look like this is your first day. <laughs> I love, let me hug you. Be seated, sir. You know, we have, to, we have to come into apostolic time that those who live to kill life must die for life to continue. Rise up. Let's prepare for burial. Raise your right hand. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. All those who are enemies of life, be careful. Be careful. This one, you are raising your hand so that it doesn't start with you. Enemies of life. Whose life are you sitting upon? In business, in office, be seated. I don't want to go attend your burial. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. It's so easy to say that enemy is out there. Sir, the, the greatest enemy is always inside. Whose life are you sitting upon? This is a place that produces least in every area. We have so much wealth, no productivity, and there's so much poverty. 
And so parents will send their, some that they don't even send to school, some that they abandon. On the day of, on the day of wedding, they want to use that child to build story building. So the only industry is your daughter. It will change in my lifetime. In a quiet bomb state in years to come, it will be a beautiful thing to marry. Oh, it will be easy to bury the dead. The dead will not cost the life of the living. I'm speaking from the altar. God told me, go home. Your people need you. You're a missionary to your people. So there are things I don't talk about. I have secrets. Secrets are things that are dear to you, too dear that you don't want to talk about it carelessly. I am aware of my call. I am aware of this gospel. I cannot reduce this gospel to some useless interest and whatever. Every time you sit down and see Beria killing somebody, you know there is something that has to change. People, people spending their future to marry and then walking to a future that they had sold in order to marry. Who does that? Okay. So what are the things? What, when last did you leave something? That's what led me to all of this. Leave something. It begins with you. That your daughter will wed or will marry somebody and you sit down and say, my daughter will be a blessing to somebody who's going to marry me. And not a curse. It starts with you. It starts with you. It starts with you. It starts with you. I'm interested in government for a different kind of reason. And I'm not going to talk in comparison to people. A few things have come to me. My interest in government is completely different. It's a mission thing. Because government is a mighty arm of God's plan. Gov you, a state cannot go higher than a government. A place cannot be larger than government. Oh, glory to God. Okay, let me, let me show you somebody in the Bible. We have been talking about Abraham. Abraham. You see, our blessing, blessing is called the blessing of Abraham. The same way God called Peter and James and John and the others and started a new plan that has touched the world. God called a man named Abraham, who became Abraham. And the plan was to, he said, uh, through you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. So don't forget, when you talk about God's plan, when you think of Abraham, think of yourself because God is calling you also so that through you, generations to come, ancestry, communities will be blessed. No one's salvation is personal. After you have been saved personal, the impact of that salvation is not personal. It has far-reaching Anybody who succeeds changes lives of others. The only success actually is coming to a place that your life can change the lives of others. That's the only success. So Abraham was called for the blessing of God to reach Gentiles. What are you called for? If you follow as God wants you to follow, there will be generations that will use your name, will use the grace of God in your life, the call of God in your life to open doors. It's not a simple thing to follow God. You cannot follow God and be insignificant. Being a church person, a Christ person, being a faith person is being an individual that has multiplier effects in every area, in your industry, in your community. So you cannot be saved. Just you, you and your wife and children and to eat and drink. You are saved for God's plan. Do you even know why God has called you and you have not left? So the, the, the story of Abraham holds a lot of lessons and instructions for all those called to inherit the blessings of God's life on earth and in an eternity. So studying Abraham has a lot to offer us. Now, when we talk about Abraham, we talk about the many years before the son of promise came, Isaac. What are the factors? What are the things in the life of Abraham? What areas did he mismark as a result of which he waited for long? 
God called him at 75. I've studied the story of the family of Abraham. Why did God have to even call him at 75? Why wouldn't God call him earlier? I had to go study generations back. To know, because to know people, know their history. You don't know people by just talking about their now. You have to know the history of people, the past of people. The past of the people, they carry a secret box for you to understand their present and predict their future. Now, the, the, the whole issue, one of the cardinal issues in the life of Abraham, one of the most serious things about the story of Abraham that you can explain many things about him is Lot. Lot. So today I'm talking to you about the price. The price of having Lot in your company. The price of having Lot following you. The price of traveling with Lot. Lot is the nephew of Abraham. Lot, L-O-T. The price for Lot. The price to accommodate Lot. The price paid to accommodate Lot. I trust God that the Holy Spirit will help me. And the Holy Spirit will help you. Shout, Amen. Before I speak, can you say something about your life? Rise. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. As this revelation is coming, open my eyes to see the Lord in my life. No, you didn't pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. As this revelation is coming, open my eyes to see Lot in my own life. Open my eyes to see how Lot is affecting my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 5. Genesis chapter 12. And verse 1 to 5. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 5. Now the Lord said to, the Lord has said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, and your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. And make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Let me announce to you that everyone who is born of God, anyone who is born of God in Christ, carries these same blessings pronounced upon him. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. We are in the size of Christ. In the value of Christ. So the blessing you carry is not according to your ability. It's in Christ. This is the Christian version of what God spoke to Abraham. Every single word that God spoke to Abraham applies to a believer. Every single word. Every single word. That's your size. The blessings of Abraham, that's your size on earth. He said, through you, by your blessing, I will bless the, the families of the earth. And anyone who curses you is in trouble. If it applies to every true believer. But the point is, a believer has to study the story of Abraham and find out. The scripture says in verse 4, listen. Say, Abraham departed. Let all of us read. One go. So, no, read everyone. Be involved. So, departed as the Lord had spoken to him. Continue. Now, God did not mention Lot. Actually, when God said, leave your family, it means Lot was not permitted. Because Lot was family. This is the story of people who say they have been Christians for 40 years and they don't look like it. They have obeyed God for 50 years. And their impact does not go beyond their immediate household. Lot. What God did not permit to go with you that has gone with you. Follow me. I have taught about Lot before. But something, something, there's something new today. Let's first of all find out what's the meaning of Lot. The meaning of Lot. Who knows the meaning of Lot? I taught this in the school of the Holy Spirit. Lot 
means covering. Look at my look at my face. Hey, stop writing. I'm sorry. Look at my face. That is Lot covering. That is Lot. That is Lot. What covers? Lot means veil. Veil. What do you use veil to do? Every time you hear the word veil, it means there is covering. That's the meaning of Lot. So Lot is what has followed you to cover you, make you small. What covers you hides your true potentials. Have you ever heard, you know, people say, ah, you are the one, you know, you are the one asking me. I should be the one asking you. But you yourself, you know that you are the only one who should ask because you don't have value in yourself. That's Lord. Your true worth has been veiled. So you see some people, when they speak, they don't sound like who they are. So he speaks, it, it sounds so well, but it's life. Lord, what reduces you, covers you. People treat you less than God's plan for you. People value you less than God's vision for you. You beg where you should rule. You crawl where you should fly. What covers you? This could be a prophetic ministry. And prophetic ministry is so exciting. And we begin to pray. Every Lord. And we sweat in this church. Sir. Veils don't live that way. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you. You shall know. Because Lot followed Abraham and Abraham had relationship with Lot. We shall know a few things about Lot. Have you seen Lot as covering? Lot is covering. Lot is a veil. Lot is a wrapping. Wrapping. Lot conceals. To talk about concealing means to hide. So Lot hides. Something that hides the plan of God in your life, that hides your future, that hides your true potential. Your success is hidden, not seen. Where you should be promoted, you bet. You see some people, I have been sitting in the same place. People will come and meet me. I prepare them and they move on. I am now on that dose that I trained. What lot is covering you? So when we just finish breakout, Many of you are too good, too free, too wonderful to make sacrifices, to be in the assembly, to stay the spirit. And so you, you postpone it since you don't leave immediately. What God will have taken from you now becomes another generational problem. So people come to pray, they pray that you were too lazy to pray. And your beautiful day becomes your burial day. And people have to sell forever to bury you. Because you could not break what had to be broken. Who told you church is a place to come and sit down and feel good? It's a place of war. It's a place to come and engage the word of God and wage war against what wants to make you small. What wants to take you out of God's plan. So if you see me every time I come with the word of God, I'm coming fighting. I'm coming. And after the word of God, I, I'm just, I just feel like, must I fight every day? Sir, so this call... This call is fire in my bone. This call is sword in my hand. There is a battle to be fought. The kingdom of darkness is, is succeeding so much in our generation. And the church is teaching people to be impotent. Using doctrines to make, to, to make people hopeless and helpless and weak. And surrender to things they are supposed to change. I pray in the name of Jesus. That the fire of the word of God will burn in your bone. Your eyes will be open to see your Lord. Every Lord that covers you and you are comfortable being covered. By the grace of God, I cause a holy fire to disturb you and keep you restless until that veil is taken from you in the name of Jesus. 
until that veil is taken from your family, until that veil is taken from your business, until that veil is taken from your ministry. In the name of Jesus. So when God calls a minister, there is a lot that comes with a person to cover the, cover the ministry. That's why when God gave me this, throughout the breakout, I was obsessed with fighting with Lot. Lot. God gave me insight as if I have never known about Lot. Be seated. And I didn't want to preach this because on the Saturday of the breakout, issue of Lot came. But as I prayed here this morning, usually I, I take revelation, what I would speak from the place of prayer. I was to go back and I sat down. And God began to unravel this. What is covering you? What is covering you? It is because it covers you that you miss the mark. So we talk about God promised Abraham, I will give you Isaac. Ishmael will not inherit you. Eliezer of Damascus will not inherit you. But it took him almost 25 years from the time of the call. It was almost 100 years before Isaac. What is it? So why, why is God's plan delayed in your life? For many that have actually known the plan of God, many don't even know God has a plan for them. They sit down and become footnotes in the storybook of God's plan for them. The storybook that they are supposed to be the main character, the beginning and the end, they just become footnotes. Enemies dominate. Problems dominate. Troubles dominate. And they become the footnotes of the storybook of God's plan for them. How do you hear this and not go home and shut down and pray and take a fast? How do you hear this and not have to kneel down and tell God until something breaks in my life, I'm not going to rest? How do you hear this and not wake up early on the day of meeting with God to show up and tell God, show me how. Give me a word that will help me. You hear this and you are comfortable sleeping. You hear this and you are comfortable just walking around and living your normal life. And church becomes a place of hypocrisy. Where we come to look like and we are not. Looking like a policeman is not, doesn't make you police. There are comedians who dress like policemen. It is just like, say this one looks like Oyibo, but it's not Oyibo. Looking like. So we come and sit in church and look like Christian. Look like those who know God. Look like God. Look like and we are not what we look like. And the only good thing said about some people is when they die, say this, this is my son, this is my daughter, this is my father, this is my friend. Judas <laughs> followed Jesus, but Lot followed him. And Lot took him out. We shall know. So Lot, Lot is a spell cast from your old place and your old life. Lot followed Abraham from the place that God told him to leave. So, coming to church, you accept Christ. Oh, Lord, I have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And people will tell you, oh, you have believed. By this confession, you are saved. You cannot go to hell. You will go to heaven. Nobody is talking about why has God brought you to the place of salvation. Because Lord is to make sure that that purpose is not fulfilled. Lot is a spell cast from your old place and life. So, Lot is a spell because Lot means casting. Casting to cast over. You cast a veil. Lot follows you from the old place to keep you covered and concealed. You finish from the university but covered excellent in school but helpless in life excellent as a young girl helpless as a married woman Lord can cover you that after marriage Lord that had, fo had followed you makes marriage detestable for you you are treated less than you were treated when you were single and you begin to envy those who never married because there is a, a lot that covers you Lord makes you excellent in business, but useless in results. Mighty in inside, on the inside, but on the outside, you 
you are a caricature. People make a joke of you. You don't look like God's plan for you. Lot is a spell cast from your roots in the flesh to keep you small. Lot is a donation from your flesh. The only thing that followed Abraham from the flesh was Lot. Sarai was another person joined to Abraham. They were one. The only thing that followed him outside was Lot. So what is it from your family? What is it from your roots? What is it from your nationality? As an Ibibio man, what Lot follows you in business? Makes your business look like an Ibibio person in Uyo. What lot makes you look like an Igbo person in the U.S.? It is said that if you go to where Nigerians live, when, where Nigerians live in the U.K., if you go to where Nigerians live in the U.K., you will see Nigeria there, very dirty. I've not been there. When you go to the U.K., go to where you have concentration of Nigerians, you will see lot from Nigeria there. Ghana used to respect us a lot. When they had education as, a, as an industry and Nigerians started going there, there is no respect for Nigeria. Once you say you are a Nigerian in Ghana, you are suspected. Lot followed our people. I've introduced all sorts of things. The first time I went to Ghana, you go to a bank, you don't see any armed policeman. Or so short. Many years ago, I went to Ghana for the first time, go to the bank, to do make transaction, no armed guy. You just see a plain, a plain cloth, uh, maybe one uniform security man there with nothing. Now it doesn't happen. Robbers have invaded everywhere. Lots have followed people. And all the insults we bear. So you cannot do business and just say Nigeria. You are not, you don't come from any place that is good enough. When we talk about ancestral things, people talk nonsense that they don't know. Ancestral, they, they, this is so real. Where you come from, your locality, your, your nationality, God says, get out of that. So you cannot do ministry like an acquired man, like an oral man, like an Ibibio. You cannot do business like anybody will see you say, this looks like acquired business or Nigerian business. There is a standard that is godly and heavenly that when somebody meets you, say, this doesn't look like what is here. Scripture says, you are, no, you are here, but you are not of this. Of this. So what lot has made you smaller? The problem we have is the problem of being small and proud. Small and proud means at least you have a car to drive. You are not begging anybody. So you carry a face that you are everything. And you don't know who God says you are. Do you know your name? This is the second time I'm asking. I asked it last week. Do you even know God's name for you? I had to know my name from God. A young girl asked me that several years ago. She went to pray in a place of retreat for me. She said, God still told her, go and ask this man, do you know your name? Do you know who I call you? I knew that was from God. I couldn't answer. I didn't know. I was a Catholic priest. I was spiritual. I was born again. I met Christ 1991. So I had walked with Christ for many years. A young girl came from the place of prayer and asked me, God said, I should ask you, do you know your name? Because you will pray according to your name. If you are a king, you cannot beg in the place of prayer. If you are a warrior, you cannot negotiate in the place of prayer. So you pray according to your name, who God calls you. You do things on earth physically according to who you are spiritually. So that changed my life. I kept inquiring. Until God unraveled things for me. And I came to know me. And nothing could hold me. Nothing. Nothing can hold me because I know who I am. And I began to understand why I suffered the way I suffered. Why I had problems in the areas I, I had problems. Because of who I am. Who God says I am. I speak over your life. Can you rise? I speak over your life. The covering that has hidden you from your name. The covering that has hidden you from your life. The covering. Lift up those two hands. I speak in the name of Jesus. One person here today. One person here today. The grace of God is coming with anger in your spirit. That you will cast that veil away. You will cast that veil away. 
if that veil is immorality, you will cast it away. If that veil is arrogance, you will cast it away. If that veil is laziness, you will cast it away. Whatever it is that covers you, hides you from your glory, and makes your glory useless and little, the grace of God is putting pressure. It has to leave you in the name of Jesus. Be seated. Be seated. I pray that this, this fire in my heart will be multiplied God's time in your spirit. You will not rest. And pray for me, I cannot rest. I cannot rest. For as long as what God has put inside of me is not, is what, it's not what is seen on the outside, why should I rest? Why should I rest? So Lot is a spare. Lot Lot is the spell cast from your roots in the flesh to keep you small. Lot is the mode of operation. Or what are the modes of operation? Let's talk about the mode of operation. The mode of operation, how Lot operates in your life is to hinder you from seeing, from hearing, and from walking into God's plan for you. Lot hinders you from hearing, from seeing, and from walking into God's plan. The fullness of God's plan. Abraham left as God has said. Lot also left. Lot has two major contributions to make to you. If you are ready to hear you, let me know. Lot, whatever has followed you that covers you, whether it's immorality from your family, whether it's laziness from the culture, whether it is arrogance, whatever it is that has been donated to you, from your environment, from your ancestry, from your culture, from your nationality, from your nationality. So Lot has two contributions. Are you ready to hear? Number one, quarrel and strife and hostility. The, the sign that Lot is in your life is that you have many quarrels. Hostility, you are not comfortable. Peace is not business, no peace. In marriage, no peace, whatever. Find out, Lord, why don't you have peace where you are? Lord is with you. Genesis chapter 13 from verse 1 to 7. Genesis, Genesis chapter 13, verse 1 to 7. Is somebody following me? If you are following me, can I see your hand? Can I see your hand? Tell somebody around you, I don't know whether you are the Lord. Tell somebody. <laughs> or whether you have a Lord. Because some of us, some of us are the Lord's. What covers other people? Because some people are so comfortable the way they sit because they are the Lord. If as I'm talking, you are comfortable dozing off. Congratulations. I can see that your veil is mighty and you are the one veiling others. You sit down, you have nothing to write. You don't, it doesn't stir you to even pray, to talk as I'm speaking. And you are comfortable. That's the problem. You know, dead body, you know they respond. No matter how much fire is burning, dead body know the move. Dead body know the move. Is it not even better? Send me any dead body that have occupied people's room for 20 years. Should, should fire not burn them so that this burial will be finished? And you will say, I'm terrible. I don't have any respect for the culture of death in our community. I hate it. I just hate it with everything in me. The culture of death. People are alive. They don't make contribution at death. People must die to bury them. Just hurt me. So, if I have no respect for it, just know it's a battle I am fighting. I want to see life. I want to see life thrive. Look at Lot. Then Abraham went up from Egypt. He and his wife. Genesis chapter 13. From verse 1 to 7. Then Abraham went up from Egypt. He and his wife. And all that he had, and lot with him to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and gold. And he went on his journey from the south, as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and I. Everyone read with me now. To the place of the altar, which he had made there at first. And there, Abram called on the name 
of the Lord. Next verse. Lot also. Did you hear that? All of this. Lot also. He went to the first altar. Lot also. The reason you come to fast and pray. And it doesn't make sense after the prayer. Lot also came. And Lot represents that you have not left. Does God say leave your family? And Lot is telling you, hello, we are here. We did. We mean it. Say we mean it. We mean it. Lot also, who went with Abraham, had flocks. So for as long as Lot lives with you, Lot also grows. So as you are growing in rank, arrogance is growing. As you are growing in rank, the pride of the family. It's also growing. That is why you see a lot of people, they get married. Wedding day is the most beautiful day after that hostility every day. Because the, more, the longer they stay in marriage, the more Lot is also growing. Lot is expanding. What followed you? Followed you from the marriage of your own parents that were not beautiful. This lot, they have many dimensions. What follows you? So you can sit down in church and hear the gospel. And lot is giving you interpretation. I have seen in church how people make business out of bazaar. So during the time of harvest and bazaar, some people know it's their business time. If you stand in their way, they will poison you. When contract comes, when anything come, comes out, that is like a project. Some people, is the time of their church. That is when they claim, we have been in this church from the beginning. If you joke with them, they will poison you. The lot that has followed them. So all the gospel they hear, you know, they are looking for opportunities. And people who sit down here, all these things we are talking about, they are looking around, who is sitting down, whether the person wears a ring or doesn't wear a ring, what is the color of the dress of the person, what car brought the person, people are mapping people, people are putting people in categories, all these things we are talking about, you know, no, it's Lot, Lot has also, so the place of salvation does not save you, because Lot is also growing, Lot follows you to altar, Lot is so familiar, that you speak in tongues, and you don't know it's the tongue, Lot is also speaking in tongues. So at the end of it, you are not different from your life 20 years ago. Lot also went with Abraham, had flocks and heads and tents. Now the land was not able to support them. Why? The land was not able to support them because the land was to be spacious and large. No matter how large the plan of God for you, sir, it cannot, con it cannot contain you and Lord. That's why you see those who were supposed to be big, they, everywhere they turn, bomb for fake men. I go to the office, in for fake men. I go everywhere I go to, I don't have rest. Give me space. Who will give you space? Lord is there. When you show have peace, there is quarrel. No space for peace. I had asked God to interpret this to you spiritually because I cannot interpret it to you. You will know what is it that does not allow the prosperity of God to, 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 to be large. He said the land. How can you say that the land that God took Abraham to was not big enough? Big enough because it was not meant to contain anything that came from his family. Anything, the old habits of the family. The old ways of marrying people. People come to church. After 20 years, they are marrying as their fathers and mothers married. After 20 years, they are raising children the way their fathers and mothers raised them. After 20 years, all they do is they do it like they do it in their village. The only difference is that they are abroad or they are in Lagos. Or at least they are in Uyo, in Derebe or Shelter. Lord. So you, 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 have, you have been given great opportunity and everybody thanks God for you. But suddenly it's not big enough to make you rise. Suddenly it's not in, enough to make you prominent and rise and impact on others. Why? There is Lord contending for space. Lord is also increasing. You went to you know you Lord went there also. Graduated. Lord graduated. 
Lot, as long as lot has not yet been separated, as you grow, lot will grow. That means anywhere you go to, there is no space. Promoted, but no peace. Lifted, not blessed. Married, not fulfilled. Rise. I'm sure you have something to say. This time around, raise your right hand. Say that thing you want to say. I don't have anything to tell you to say. Say that thing you want to say. Just say something. My space. I take back my space from Lord. I take back my space from Lord. I take back my space from Lord. Be seated, be seated. I want to let you know that I will not come to church and take your time or fight you and insult you without a purpose. The purpose is to set fire on you. There's something you must take home and pray until you can take a decision and you can break out. So we were make, when we talk about making ordinary people into champions, that's not a simple business. Sir. Church for me is not a smiling place. After we are done worshiping, we have to go to war. Sir, the word of God is a sword. It's called sword. Sir, sword is not used for peace. You don't carry sword to play. If it is a play with sword, it's a play that can kill. That means when the word of God is, is involved, it means life and death situation. Because if somebody is not delivered now, somebody will die. Do you know heaven is not disturbed when people die because dead dates have been set. Heaven is disturbed that life has not happened. That's why the scripture says that at the repentance of one soul, heaven rejoices. So the, what makes heaven rejoice is life. So when you hear me talk about that, like, uh, don't worry me about it. So I fight for life. I fight that you rise and become bigger. So when you are bigger, many people will rise. Have you seen a tree rise before? Once a tree rises, many things rise with that tree. Everything attached to that tree rises. Even ants, birds, who live in a tree, they grow with a tree. So the deliverance of one person is the deliverance of generations. So it's not a joke. So let me give you another. The second contribution, I hope you have taken note of the first contribution, quarrel and hostility. They see that the place was not enough. Lot, Lot they, 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 they were not able to support them. That they might dwell together for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. What does verse 7 say? And there was strife between the headsmen of Abraham's livestock and the headsmen of Lot's livestock. That's number one. Strife, war, confusion. So pay attention. Why is your marriage marked with strife? It's not the plan of God. Look at the lots that have followed you into the marriage. The things that should have left you. Many people are not even interested in being prepared for marriage. So they walk into marriage with not lots. With a, a committee of lots. And so the hostility visit. People start business. And everywhere, everywhere is buzzing with that business. One month later, two months later, it's over. If you want to go far in life, your business cannot be managed by anybody in your family. Except the person qualifies by reason of qualification and proof. He has to prove that over time he can handle this. You cannot hand over anything that God has given to you to anybody in your family. Don't give to anybody on sentiment. It has to be by merit and qualification. Your son has no business managing your business because he's your son. Your wife has no business managing it because he's your wife. No! It has to be in the hands of who can Lot has destroyed generational businesses. So when I talk about Lot, will you count it to the end? Will you count it to the end? Will you count it to the end? So when you hear the Spirit of God groaning in agony and pain, how many great things that will have blessed people have been damaged on, in the hands of Lot? Who make you feel guilty? I am your brother. You are bringing another person to manage. Okay, sorry. Let me talk about second contribution. Needless war. Sir, there are wars that are to be fought. Like what we are doing now, we are, I'm fighting war. 
God told me, go home. Your people need you. I'm, I'm fighting war. I don't come preaching to make you love me or feel good. I come preaching as the double-edged sword, cutting me and cutting you and making you angry. And I'm angry also. And we fight against weakness and overpower uselessness and rise into the place of prominence. That's how to turn ordinary people into champions. Needless war. There are wars to be fought, but there are wars that you don't fight. Many people, they have problems they shouldn't have. Just because lots follow them. Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14 is a long story, so we can read from maybe verse, verse 10. Or maybe from verse 11. If you read from verse 8. And the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, that's from verse 8. The king of Atma, the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zohar, went out and joined together in battle in the valley of Sidim against Kedoldoma, king of Elam, Tidal, king of nations, Amraphel, king of Shina, and Ariok, king of Eleazar, Eleazar. Four kings against five. Now the valley of Sidon was full of asphalt pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled. Some fell down, they remained. The remainder fled to the mountains. Verse 11. Verse 11. Everyone read with me. Then they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their provisions, and went their way. Verse 12. They also, now read that one aloud, want to go. It's okay. Abraham brought a son. Who dwelt where? Sodom. And his goods. I mean, see. Wait till concern Abraham and the battle of five kings and four. But because they have taken lot. The world he shouldn't go to. The time he should have used in doing other things. See wars, many wars we fight, many court cases, many enemies, things that don't need to worry us, time that should be spent in great things, honoring God, thanking God, settling disputes, war versus man and woman, husband and wife. Sometimes you sit in office and see it, you don't even know what to do. You just feel like you disappear and appear somewhere else. Wars, Lot, the war involving Lot. See, if you read down, because of that, they when somebody escaped and told Abraham, do they sit so Lot <laughs> been taken? Because Lot is now his responsibility. If Lot had stayed there, then there will be no, he will not be involved because he had left there. But because he followed him, now he has to fight because of Lot. We don't, the scripture has not told us how many people were killed on the side of Abraham. Scripture told us he mobilized his domestic army, his slaves, went and fought. In every battle, there may be casualties. The pain and the suffering, the many opportunities lost because of the battle of pride, the battle of arrogance, the unnecessary fasting and prayer because of the things you should let go that you refuse to let go. The many, the many delay, the many struggle, the many fight. The many who fork and prayer houses, the many candle burned, the many oil broken, bottle of oil broken, or many useless assignments, visiting river, being bathed by native doctor. You want me to count this battle, these wars? Because a lot is involved. The good thing is this Lot had to leave. As soon as Lot leave, this is where we are. Genesis chapter 13. Verse 14 to 17. When you are done writing this scripture, I will prefer you stand. Because we'll say a few words of prayer and I will let you go. Read it, everyone. The Lord said to Abraham, After Lot had separated from him, lift up your eyes. Now, and look from the place where you are, not what? Southward, eastward, westward, for all the land which you see. Wait, do you know what Lot was to do? Cover. So you are where God asks you to prosper, but you don't see it. Say, the Lord sent me to come to you, but I've been in you for 10 years now. I've not been able to find my way. Yes. Abraham was there. He didn't see. And said, so now I've been asking the Lord, 
tell me again, the Lord has not told you. Because for as long as Lot was there, the Lord had not spoken. That's why some people come and hear church, but they don't hear God. You hear the word, you don't have rema. Because of Lot covering you. If you forget today, you have forgotten so many things. You cannot. All the land that you see, now that the covering is gone, lift up your eyes. God will not tell you, lift up your eyes when you are covered. He's waiting for you to uncover. After the covering had been removed, now you can use your eyes. Who told you you are blind? All the things you've been looking for prophet to solve, who told you you cannot see them? Point is that you are comfortable maintaining Lord that you cannot see. So you have to look for pay as you go prophet to see what you were meant to see. To see your call. To see your wife. See your husband. See but Abraham, God told him, go to the place that I will show you. And God waited. Because lots. And many times you ask God to speak. He had already spoken. You didn't obey the last instruction. How dare you ask for the next instruction? There have been moments in my walk with God that I will ask God, talk to me. And suddenly the Spirit will convict me. And you had been told already. So God doesn't talk because you want him to talk. God talks because he wants to and there is need to. He's sovereign and mighty. From today, by the grace of God, by the warfare of the word of God, the covering will leave you in the name of Jesus. If it is adulterous relationship that is wrecking and delaying you, if it is betting an addiction to substance that's covering you, this arrogance and pride, whatever it is, cheap life, whatever it is that stops you from seeing what you were meant for, the plan of God is that the curse covering nations, Isaiah chapter 25, the veil that covers nations shall be removed. It can be removed. In your case, I pray that it will be removed. He said, for all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth. So that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Verse 17. Re read that everyone. Walk. Wait. Until now, Abraham had gone to Egypt. But it's not God that asked him to go there. For the first time, God tells him, rise and walk. Why? He has heard. He can see. Wow. The reason why you have not moved from where you are to the next, you have not heard the next instruction. And you cannot see the direction. So delay has reason. Being stuck now, you say my business is failing. You are blaming everybody except the fact that you don't have direction from God. You don't hear, you don't see, therefore you cannot walk. If you walk without saying, you fall into a pit and die. And God doesn't speak out of sentiment because you are crying. God speaks because you obey. At this point, I think we have prayed prayer is to do obedience. Lift up two hands close. Return. Return to where you were called and drop Lot. And if you are here in this church, you are coming face to face with salvation for the first time. Drop everything. Follow him. Give your heart. Repent. So I'm not, re I'm not going, I'm not going with former things. I'm going now. Going into my new life in Christ. I'm going free from this thing. I'm going free from the old things. I'm going free from familiar things. As you speak, I'm also speaking. Familiar things. Long standing things. Close things. Close people. Close places. Close ideas. Close emotions. 
close practice and habit, close culture and lifestyle, the familiar way of responding, familiar ways of doing things that meets the mark, that makes one small, makes me small. Speak in these words. I remove this veil. Remove this veil. Remove this veil. I accept to follow and to follow free from Lord. I follow immediately. This call today will not be delayed till tomorrow. I follow completely with no Lord following me. As a father said, in any way Lord has been following me in this family, I'm becoming close to my children. So my children see Lot as a family life. My children see Lot quarreling, fighting, envy, jealousy. There are siblings who, who are envious. A sister is getting married. Another sister is angry. That's the Lot of the family line. The family that the father does not feel good when the mother is blessed. A husband and a wife being civil servant, the promotion of one makes the other feel like, why, have I, why am I not so promoted? How can my wife become director? I am just a supervisor. And the children have that lot also. The first sister is angry because the younger sister is married. The other brother is angry that the other brother has admission. These are lots. The Lord take veils from me. Before people use witchcraft to destroy people, it is first of all a familiar mind how to relate with people's blessings. Say, Lord, take veil away from me. Take this lot from me. Take this lot. Take this lot from me. Take this lot from me. Take this lot from me.